Love Story Magnetic Multi-Shaper Punch allows you to create five different punched shapes using one punch system. Let's take a look at how this works. Your punch top is magnetically attached to the base and just pops right off. We're going to start by creating a border and you're going to take your paper and line it up using the border indicators at the top of your punch base. So you're just going to make sure that it's even there your punch top snaps right in place over the top. Those magnets pull it right into position so you don't need to worry about trying to fiddle with it or get it into the proper placement. Once you've got your punch in place, you're gonna press down firmly on the top with the palm of your hand, and that creates your first punch. Once you've got that first punch, we're gonna be looking again at the border indicator along the side here. We're gonna slide our paper to the left and line up the center with that pink image on the border indicator here. And that image is slightly raised, so you can use your finger to kind of push it into place. Once you've got it in line, you also want to line up the other edge here so that you've got a straight border. You should see that pink icon at the center there, and you can pop your punch back into place. Now you could continue across and do this for any size of border. And we're gonna just continue across the top here. As we get that last punch on this side, then you'll see the top starts to peel off. We're gonna shift it back to the right to finish off that other side. And there we go, our border, the top pops off, and we're left with just a beautiful border along the top of our paper. Now let's take a look at some of the unique shapes you can create using this punch system. We're going to be starting with this 12 by 12 sheet of paper. And the cool thing about the magnetic punch system is that you can really place your paper anywhere you want. You're not limited to the edges here. And that punch top is gonna snap into place right over the top of your paper. Once you've got it in place, you can go ahead and make your first punch. Once you've got that first punch, we're gonna be taking a look along the base here. And we're going to be creating a circle. Now we've got two options, a six inch circle, or a four inch circle. Let's stick with the smaller circle today. So we're gonna be looking for that brown icon at the center of our punch. We're rotating to the right. And again, that image is sort of raised. So you can stick your finger over it and really make sure that you're getting your punch into place. You've got some outline guides to guide you in lining it up. And once you've got it in place, you can snap your punch back over the top. And we're gonna continue working around in a circle like this, going to the right each time and lining up that center of our image. Now, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that when you're using this punch system, you're using lighter weight papers. It's designed especially for lighter weight papers. And you could probably get away with using some lighter weight cardstock, but you really are gonna have an easier time with those lighter weight scrapbooking papers. You'll notice that mostly I've been using solid colors or these light background patterns, and those will really help to show off your punched image. You don't want anything that's gonna distract too much from your punches, but these light background patterns really do show off that punched outline, which we'll see in a moment here. And there we go, missed one little corner there, but you've got your perfect circle with that punch going all the way around, and you could put a beautiful focal at the center of that. You've done a circle, now with a few extra tricks, you could also create an oval. Let's take a look at that now. You're going to be using the oval positioner along the side of your top of your punch, and what you want to do is line it up so that that oval positioner is parallel with the edge of your paper. So you can kind of line up your paper there where you think it ought to go. Once you've got your punch in place, you can kind of shimmy your paper around to make sure that it's in the proper position. And once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and make your first punch. Once you've got your first punch, we'll be taking a look at the base here. We're going to be creating an oval, so we're looking for the oval indicator at the top left of your punch. We'll be looking for that little blue image at the center of our punch. 
and we'll line it up there. Again, you can kind of use your finger to hold it in place while you get it in line. And we'll make our second punch. We'll continue, like if we were creating a circle, to do our third punch there. And now comes the only other trick in making our oval. For our fourth punch, we're going to be looking along the bottom of our punch system here for the oval indicator in the bottom right. And we've got that little blue icon again, so we're going to line up our very first punch with that. And we're going to create our fourth punch here at the top. Once we've got that one done, we're going to continue using the top left punch to create the rest of our oval. So we're continuing now, just as if we were creating a circle. And we've got one more punch here. Every time you punch out a shape using this system, you're going to get your beautiful punched image. Here's the oval but also a frame that you punched out of there. So you're really getting two punches with each effort here. Those circles and ovals are perfect for some of your smaller focals. If you wanted to create something for a little larger focal, let's take a look at how to do multiple sizes of squares. Now we're gonna start using the border system along the top here and make our first punch. At this point, we could stop and make a very small square, but we do want something a little larger, so we're going to continue using that border system along the top and make a second punch. You could decide how large you want your square to be. We could keep going and make three or four punches. We're going to stop at two, and we'll rotate our image. We're going to be looking for the square indicator here along the side of our punch. We've got that little orange icon that we'll be looking for at the center of our punch. And we'll go ahead and rotate that now. Once you've got it in line, we'll make our top punch. And we could stop here and make a rectangle if we wanted and turn it again. But we want a square, so we're going to continue use that border system at the top and create a second punch along the top. The great thing about this is that you could really make your frames to fit any sized focal that you're working with. We're going to rotate again and continue on this side. Again, what is great about this punch system is that it's a very intuitive system using the Last but not least, probably the easiest way to add some punches to your project is using the corner punch. So we've got our pre-cut matting here. We've cut it down to the size we want. And we're going to take the tip of it and insert it at the corner of our punch here. Now we could decide if we want something very small or a slightly larger corner. Let's aim to have the tip of our paper meet that magnetic dot there. And we'll punch our first corner. Now, it's very easy to punch a corner, and if we continue and do that for all four corners of our paper, in just four punches, we're going to end up with a beautiful frame for a photo or journaling or other focal for our project. Let's finish it off here with one last punch. And there you go, you've got that frame. Again, you can make this any size by creating matting to fit any focal you're working with and just adding those corner accents. So once more, you've seen making the various shapes that this punch system offers. We've done some borders, 
and corners. You've seen circles and ovals. And with each of those, you've also gotten the coordinating frame. And we've also shown you how to make squares of different sizes. So you've really got a variety of options to fit any element of your project.